20 kilometers to go to the line and that these four riders that broke away have been away for an awful long way now but they were despite the danger man of Yaroslav Popovic in blue nine minutes behind overnight has now gained back four minutes 40 over Floyd Landis Oscar Freer will work with him because he wants to win the stage and go very close in to challenging Robbie McEwen for his green jersey Alessandro Bolan he's a very good sprinter as well and that's evidenced by his third place finish this year in Paris-Roubaix and Christophe Le Mavel, well he's motivated by the fact it's Bastille Day this is the back of the peloton but I can tell you now that behind the peloton uh, quite a few riders have been split off in those crosswinds including funnily enough the former Giro d'Italia winner on a couple of occasions that's uh, Gilberto Simoni everybody's crowding up behind the boys in lime green but nobody is willing to help them chase and it looks like they're all going to pay for it today Yep, it looks as if they are they're actually having a hard time eating into this advantage and they've picked up that very fast tailwind on the running down towards the finish Oscar Ferreira every time it slows down Phil you see him going to the front he realizes he's got a very good chance here of getting himself win number three John Gap the board there said 431 I think but by the time he gets up there I think our our timings which come at us on screen are a little bit more reliable because they're being taken from the GPS system. The faces of the boys who are riding at a steady 50 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I just quickly checked my rule book there. In fact, it is graded as a, an average mountain stage this afternoon, which I think is a bit uh, steep because it's not really that hard at the start. Anyway, the race organizers have put it in as an average mountain stage, which means that there are actually 25 points available for the first rider to cross the line so it's really fairly important so we get closer to the finish these guys have now got to start thinking of how they can outwit the man in the orange jersey there and the blue shorts because Oscar Freire is certainly the fastest Yaroslav Popovic making a good move up the overall classification Alejandro Bal Balan at the back there wondering whether or not he can outwit the man from Spain three different net four different nations represented the Frenchman Christophe Lemavel would certainly very much like to come up with a win here this afternoon. If they want to win, I think they're going to have to uh, launch an attack on the running down towards the finish. 15 kilometers to go. It's curtains now, but when is Mavel going to make his attack? Because he's got no chance he runs into the finish with these three other riders. Well, he's got to make a move uh, somewhere on the run-in towards the end but you can be sure that that's what Alessandro Balan is thinking and of course Yaroslav Popovic because although Popovic is going to move up in the overall classification I think probably also on the back of his mind is trying to get a stage win too I think that might even be his first priority because yes he'd be a top 10 rider again in the tour uh, but he would be more interested now in Australia because he doesn't want to be just a top 10 rider he wanted to be a rider racing for first place he lost that chance I think yesterday uh, all depends if he continues to climb better than he did in the Pyrenees when we get to the Alps because he can ride a good time trial as well and uh, made a quick check of the, the rule book in fact the organization have put four mountains of what they call medium mountain stages down and the stage today Luchon to Carcassonne comes into that category Monte Limar to Gap the day after tomorrow comes into that category and then the final mountain stage from Morzin to Macon is a medium mountain stage where there are less points available for the king of the mountain for the king of the sprints or the green jersey points classification so, so that really should make Robin McEwen feel a little bit more comfortable with his lead because that's six points has been taken out on the road by Oscar Ferreira and he's got the possibility of another 25 and Robin McEwen will probably be looking at taking 16 points if he leads the race home in fifth place. And when you go to the high mountains, there are only 20 points available, and there's only 15 points available in the individual time trial. So their competition very much aimed at the riders who are specialists in the sprint. It's all stacked up for them on the very, very flat stages where uh, normally 35 points are available. So these riders, uh, although I thought they would lose a fair amount of their time towards the finish, they're still holding on to 4 minutes 20. Looking at the way these riders are working together, nobody is sort of hanging on at the back pole. They're all doing their regular little bit of pacemaking, taking a breathe at the back, 
getting on with the job in hand they know now they're not going to be caught well now what they've got to think about is not consider the time advantage because uh, i'm sure they will lose a fair amount of time down towards the end we're projecting a win time of around about a minute and 23 but if the main field doesn't keep the pressure on they could conserve two or three minutes of this advantage after all let's not forget these projections are all coming uh, by computer and it all depends on how the legs are of the riders in team phonak i've made a note of that one because i want to see just how this computer does that i know we are slightly nibbling away at seconds off the lead but it's a very brave man to predict a victory by a minute 23 I'll check that out when they reach the line later. 8.9 kilometers to go, and it's still four and a half minutes. I think the computer might have made a little bit of a mistake here this afternoon because they don't look like a peloton who are actually chasing these four riders in earnest. Absolutely They're basically right. just trying to survive. Just heard the race radio shout, attack to Popovich. Our camera's cooked to it, and there it goes. We have to get it. Boy, he's really gone too. A little bit slow to react to Chris Lofler-Mavell. I don't think anybody was expecting an attack this far out. Well, it's a brave move by this man that's so far from the finish. This is a class act. Don't ever forget Yaroslav Popovich. Lumavel in difficulty here, trying to get himself back into content, contention here. He's trying to get onto the back of those two riders for France if he can. But look at the performance here of Alessandro Balan. He's dragging up Oscar Freire there. Oscar Freire, he is just quite happy to sit there on the wheel. Popovich was certainly going for this one. They have got rid of Christophe Lemervel. He had nothing and no answer to that. Popovich now says, well, that was my 100% effort, and back come these two at the behind. And watch out here, because as they slow down, you may well see Christophe Lemervel just be able to make the junction once nope, more. Now no, Freire's going over the Freire's top. Gone. It's the old one-two now. Freire's trying, and they don't want Lemervel to get back into this. Well, Oscar Freire took one straight out of the tactical handbook there. Look at Balan, sees the motorbike over to the right-hand side and says, thanks very much, I'll have a bit of that. Just a fraction of a slipstream helps him to close the gap down between himself and the Spaniard. Looks over his shoulder there. Now here's another move, Popovich now coming over the top. He's going to try and go once again, but this time Balan is right on his wheel. Or is he? No, he's not. Balan has seen the danger. He's the man now trying to get across to Popovich. The Rabobank rider, Oscar Freire, this is the man who is in fourth place. Look at the white on his jersey there, that's the salt that's come from profusely sweating in this incredibly high temperature here this afternoon. And as this time it's Popovich decides to go straight over the top. This is the only way to win. They know they've got to get to the finish alone because not any one of these three riders is actually confident of outsprinting Oscar Freire. Well, Johan Brunil will be advising Popovic from the car here, and he's clearly said, hit them again because you might get away. Popovic is looking very strong here. Now, that's two big attacks that we've seen from Yaroslav Popovic. It's been counted. Here comes Christophe Lumavel as he makes the roundabout. Not too close to our motorbike. Popovic here we go. trying again. Four kilometers to go. The third attack we know of by Yaroslav Popovic, and it's always Alessandro Balan who tries to reduce the deficit. He's looking a little bit sluggish this time. He certainly is looking a little bit sluggish. He's left himself five or ten bicycle lengths advantage. You need to close down gaps like this very quickly, but you know Phil Balan is a very strong rider. We saw him in the early part of the year. I think he was fifth in the Tour of Flanders. He was third in Paris-Roubaix. He is a strong rider in the one-day races. But here comes a Christophe Lemervel. He can see them just up the road. He can't get onto them. This is off. Here Popovic go. is going one. again. And nobody was looking this time. And Balan says, no, I've been doing it all the time. But again, Fred has gambled and wouldn't help him. And I don't think Balan's, uh, Balan's got it anymore. I think he's cracked. Well, he's just looking at uh, Belarislav Popovic there. Three kilometers to go. That's about four minutes of effort. When you've been in the lead for so long, you've got to find something special. But I think he's not very happy about it's finding right. Oscar Freire yeah. on his wheel. He is so fed up of it now. He's had to close every attack. This is Popovic's fourth attack. Freire has not come off his wheel and may well have cost him the race. Well, uh, this morning, Lequipe was very... Uh, uh, very scathing in his remarks about team discovery saying well finally we've seen this team crumble but today they're absolutely bouncing back they've decided now that if they're not going to win the Tour de France this year with Hincapi, Popovic, Martinez they're going to go out and try and win stages let's not forget last year Popovic was the best young rider in the Tour de France Freire has been caught out here this afternoon this man is now definitely going to get the win but I'm just casting my mind back to Johan Brunel this morning in the newspapers Phil 
he basically put everybody's guard down by saying, well, it's all over for us now. Well, this is the part of the square now. The finish is on his left shoulder, but we've still quite a way to go around the square here. Very tricky corners. Gets a bit narrow. He's not going to worry about this. He's free to fly now. This will be a stage win indeed for Team Discovery. Well, you can't keep a good team down, and the tactical brilliance of Brunel is showing us again how to ride a Tour de France. Taking all the risks going around these final few corners. Jaroslav Popovic now knows he's got the victory because these two riders have been caught out. Alessandro Balan was the man who was looking for the victory for Italy here this afternoon, but the victory is going to go to the Ukraine and to Yaroslav Popovic and to the United States with Team Discovery. We expected him to be the man who would lead Team Discovery to a podium position this year in the Tour. Well, that all flail, fell away on the slopes of the Pyrenees, but like a proud champion, a true champion, he's fighting himself back into the Tour de France this afternoon with a very fine stage victory. He's lining up for the finish very shortly. He needn't worry about those two behind now. He earned the victory by simply hitting them as hard as he could not once twice three but four times and the fourth time they threw out the white flag and now Yaroslav Popovic will also probably climb up to around 11th or 12th in the Tour de France but much more important to him now is the victory here today the victory here is something which is very sweet indeed for a bike rider when you come into the finishing straight you know you're going to win especially when you're alone like this and you throw your hands up in the air in That's victory it. that is a very special moment Yaroslav Popovic, those legs are on fire right now. He's just flicked that gear up a notch. Oh, is Lapana ever going to come to me, he says. Keeps looking under his arms there to see if there's anybody coming after him. There isn't. He's done it. Zips up his jersey. The strong man and the Ukrainians are having a great race here with uh, Sergei Honcho as well. Yaroslav Popovic gets the stage win for Team Discovery and here comes the battle for what is left and uh, look at this, Balan is going to give Freire a run for his money and coming right up and gritting his teeth is Le Mavel. Well, Le Mavel is going to take fourth place there. You can see Alejandro Balan looks over his shoulder and in fact, Oscar Freire, having sat on him for a number of attacks, has decided he isn't going to challenge him for the win. But look at the face on Balan, that tells it all. Balan second. Freire, in fact, was not throwing a dummy at Balan. He'd had enough for the day back down the road. Christophe Lemavel, because it was Bastille, they never stopped trying to catch up, and he came desperately close. But I really think fourth was always going to be for him. There's Yaroslav Popovic. Johan Brunel this morning saying all we've got left to race for is stage wins. Didn't take long in grabbing one, did he? And uh, there'll be celebrations of a type in the team bus tonight. It's a huge long line here. Team Fonak are stretching this out. They're not trying to sprint here this afternoon. They're trying to make it safe over the last three or four kilometers because if you stretch the main field out into a big long line, then what that does for you, Phil, is makes it just that little bit safer. There is Robbie McEwen. I was waiting to see when he would pop up. He's right on the wheel of Tom Bonin, and I wonder if Tom Bonin is going to take a little bit of pride in trying to sprint here this afternoon. Still another corner to come yet. The lead out for Eric Zabel, the second man in blue. Tor Hushoff is trying to get a lead out. He's third man in green off to the right. Also mixing it in the sprint there is Tom Bonin in the white jersey. He's got his lead out, man. He's going to come. And Robbie McEwen has got Tom Bonin's back wheel. Bernardi's off to the left of the picture. This is the swing that will bring them up into the finishing straight now. They take it wide. Bowen has got the position. Second round the corner. Bernardi's on his right shoulder. Bernardi will break left but they're waiting for somebody to go. The lead out man. Hushoft is fully stretched and going out of it. So Bowen and McEwen. Here comes the pocket bomber. He's going to just smoothly move forward. Nobody can beat him except Tom Bowen. No. Yes. Tom Bowen and go. Well that was a little bit of pride for the world champion there. If it had been for first place it might have been a slightly different sprint but Bonin I think trying to get his morale back he's been beaten a number of times by Robbie McEwen but that one filled that fifth place that was just for pride and if Robbie McEwen was going to lose a sprint to Tom Bonin in this tour I suppose that's the one he'd have picked Bonin fifth ahead of McEwen and the pair of them behind the four members of the escape group led in by Yaroslav Popovic